So in this example, what I have is uh, negative 5 pi over 2. And what we need to do is determine coterminal angles. So the main important thing with coterminal angles is, you know, when you're trying to understand a coterminal angle, make sure you can always sketch what a coterminal angle is going to look like. So if I have negative 5 pi over 2, remember we always start on our initial side. And if it's positive, we go in the counterclockwise direction. Negative, we go in the clockwise direction. So if I go to 5 pi over 2, remember when we're dealing with radians, a distance of halfway around the circle we represent as pi, right? And then all the way would be 2 pi. So if you can see, whenever what I always like to do is I like to take, if we think of pi as like a whole, if I have divided by 2, what I like to do is split that quadrant into twos. Well, by the axes, you can see these are already completed. So therefore, going in the negative direction, this would be negative pi halves. Over here would be negative pi. This distance would be negative 3 pi over 2. And then over here would be negative 2 pi, right? Or negative uh, 4 pi, as you could write it. And really, it's not negative, because that's just the direction. But that's equal to 4 pi over 2, right? Do you understand that? So then, if I had to continue to get to 5 pi, that would be 5 pi over 2. And the reason why, again, why it's negative is the direction we're going to. So what we're doing is when we're talking about coterminal angles, we want to find an angle that has the same initial side and the same terminal side. Okay, Has the same initial and terminal. And what we can do is we can add or subtract 2 pi. But our question, and one thing I want you guys to understand, is can I keep on just going around? If I started here and I wrap around here, could I just continue around 1, continue again, continue again, continue again? So what I want you to understand about coterminal angles is there's infinite many answers. Infinite many answers. All right. So if I said find two coterminal angles, you're looking pretty good because there's infinite many answers. However, um, where this gets a little bit tricky is I'm asking you to find the smallest positive and negative coterminal angle. So what I want to understand is if I subtract another 2 pi, I'm going to get I'm going to come around again one more time and it's going to be right there, right? So if I take negative 5 pi and I subtract 2 pi, well remember negative 2 remember 2 pi is the same thing as 4 pi over 2. So let's rewrite it as 4 pi over 2, because then they have the same bases. That equals a negative 9 pi over 2. Is that the smallest coterminal angle we could do? Well, let's look at it. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, what, what happens if I, instead of taking negative 2 pi over 2, what about if I added 2 pi? Then I would just have that angle right there. And you see, does that still have the same initial and terminal side? Yes. So. I don't need to subtract negative 5 pi over 2. And the reason why you know do I add or subtract or add twice or subtract twice is when you have an angle that's greater than one revolution, you don't add and subtract. You're either going to add twice or subtract twice. That's where the difference comes in. So if you look at this one, here if I have negative 5 pi over 2, if I add 4 pi over 2, that gives me negative <coughs> pi over 2 which is perfect. That is a negative coterminal angle. Same initial, same terminal. And then if I add 4 pi over 2 again, that's just going to give me a 3 pi over 2. And again, 3 pi over 2 is going to represent this angle. Boom. So that's the smallest negative and the smallest positive. All right. So in this case, since I had an angle that was larger than a, one, a revolution, I had to add my rev, I had to add four pi over two twice. Make sense? All right. So would you like me to go over one that just has to add and subtract?